And firefighters continue to battle the fast moving Tanaha fire in the La Cresta community near the Murrieta Riverside County. The blaze exploding to 2000 acres and it's currently only 10% contained. Evacuation orders remain in effect for more than 1000 homeowners. The fire broke out in the area of Tanaha Road and Clinton Keith Road near the edge of the Santa Ana Mountains Wednesday around 4 o'clock. It was initially reported at 25 acres. The cause of the fire remains under investigation, but some lightning strikes had recently been seen in the area amid Wednesday's very hot and humid conditions. Authorities issued mandatory evacuation orders for all residents along the trail circle in La Cresta. Campuses in the Murrieta Valley Unified School District were closed Thursday because of the fire. A local business owner says she's in fear for her safety after having her business broken into several times this year. The owner is looking for the public's help to identify the people who broke into her business again just last night. The suspect, 27-year-old Sheldon Mosley, attempted to break into her shop late one evening when she was all alone. Romero, who owns Jessica's Hair and Nails Salon, recently took to Facebook looking for answers after her business was broken into again. She said that this has been an ongoing issue and she's even slept in her shop to try and protect it. Now she's considering taking her business to another town. She asks that if you recognize any suspects in the video we have posted to our social media platforms to contact BPD. The city of Bakersfield is closing the bike path in southwest Bakersfield to spray for mosquitoes this morning. Yeah, and it's a large section of the path. 23 ABC's Daniela Garrido standing by live uh, where some of the barriers are up to tell her how it might affect that morning bike ride, Daniela. That's right. Good morning. You can see the barriers behind me. I'm standing on Allen Road and that will be the beginning of the bike path closure all the way until Enos Lane. Again, like you guys mentioned, the city of Bakersfield will be closing that portion of the bike path for mosquito spraying. Now, this is something a lot of avid riders or walkers on that bike path have been complaining about. They say this year, more than other years, there has been an uptick in mosquitoes. So we actually spoke with Kern Mosquito Control on why exactly there has been an uptick in this area of mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. So we have a lot of natural ground out there that they, they flood up with water to perk the underground aquifer and uh, mosquitoes take that harborage and water and they like to breed in that because they have protection. They say they'll be spraying over 600 acres of land along the bike path. So if you are an avid user of the bike path this morning from 6 a.m. until 9 a.m. from right here on Allen Road until Enos Lane, it will be closed. You'll see mosquito spraying by airplanes. So for now, we're live in Southwest Bakersfield. Danielle Garrido, 23BC News connecting you. All right, Daniela, thank you. It is, of course, known as the biggest party of the year in Bakersfield. We're talking about Village Fest. Yep. It is a major undertaking, and this weekend they'll be celebrating a quarter century. 23 ABC's Josh Sanders spoke with one of the event's creators and shows us what we can expect. Frugatti's owner, Ralph Frugaletti's passion for kids has been on display for a quarter of a century through one of the county's favorite outdoor parties. Here we are 25 years later. It's stronger than ever. People love it. People look forward to it every year. They always ask us, why don't we do it twice a year? And I don't think they know how much work it takes to put one on, much less two. Frugaletti says Village Fest combines his love of beer and wine and a call to serve Kern County's most vulnerable. By coming to the event, you're supporting kids, not just in general, not all over the world, not all over the country, but here in Kern County. 100% of the funds raised this weekend benefit the Children's Advocates Resource Endowment, or CARE. The local nonprofit raises money for local children's charities. We've given things to uh, the, 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 the police athletic league, the sheriff's athletic league. We've done the homeless shelter. Like we gave away like 300 pajamas to these kids that didn't have any at the homeless shelter. We, well, we turned the little sleepy Kern County Museum into Disneyland for one night. Mike Ramsey has been a part of the village Village Fest for 23 years, 22 of those as the mayor. Pretty much take care of all the setup and the logistics here on the museum. You know, all the all the equipment we use, generators, porta potties, fencing, stages, 
The event will house five different stages throughout the museum grounds with 15 bands, each bringing their unique sounds and genres from blues to island tunes. As Frugaletti reflects on 25 years of the festival, he's grateful it's made a difference. Um, you know, it's really neat to be able to see what it's become and what it means to the community and what it means to some of these charities to be able to get some funds to be able to do some things for these kids that otherwise they wouldn't be able to afford. And that was 23ABC's Josh Sanders reporting. Frugaletti said he expects 5,000 people at the event, running from 6 to 10 p.m. tomorrow. Tickets are $70 to $80. Include all your drinks and food samples along with the music. For information, go to our website, turn to 23.com. Well, if you're looking for other fun events to do this weekend, there's a lot of opportunities for you and the family to enjoy at the Buena Vista Museum. Tomorrow at the museum, it'll be family day. This event takes place on the first Saturday of the month. Weird Science Night will be held at 6.30 p.m. Really? tomorrow night. Yeah, at the museum. This event is for adults only, with tickets at $15 per person and $25 per couple. You must reserve this spot for this event. That'll be interesting to go to just to see what exactly Weird Science Night is all It's not all like about. the movie, is it, from, from the I 80s? I don't know. I don't know. Starring Anthony Michael Hall and Kelly LeBrock. You know I haven't seen it, Mike. I know. Well, he, <laughs> it's, a, it's a couple of teen boys who are kind of like, you know, they bring, oh. they bring a computer-designed woman to life. Oh, I don't Kelly think LeBrock. it'll get that weird. That's pretty weird. That, that is. That's what I was. <laughs> wow. You Thank never you. know. You never know. Taking a look at our air quality, still unhealthy for sensitive groups, so we can expect to see some hazy conditions outside that forecasted AQI 115. But taking a look at those conditions, we are cooling down. So for those Friday Night Live uh, games happening tonight, cooler temperatures compared to where we were at last week, 96 by around 7 p.m., cooling down to the upper 80s by later on tonight. And tomorrow we're going to see even cooler temperatures. So if you're headed to the gone to the dogs 5k absolutely beautiful conditions for that upper 70s around 9 a.m. and then mid 80s by noon taking a look at Sunday even cooler temperatures if you're headed to the fairy tale bridal event expo upper 70s by your mid morning cooling down to up uh, warming up to the low 80s by noon so absolutely beautiful conditions this weekend I'll have more details on your seven day forecast coming up all right, still to come, a community affected by the tragedy of mass shootings comes together. We'll show you a special way how they honored the victims and showed solidarity coming up. And sur a surprising report to those who apply for student loans, you might not be getting the financial forgiveness that you're applying for. We'll have the details coming up. Welcome back to 23 ABC. There are no traffic incidents to report at this time. Those roadways are moving freely, but just a reminder, uh, the northbound Rosedale Highway ramp is closed due to construction. So as you are headed out the door, hitting those roadways, just something to be aware of. Two Texas towns recently affected by those mass shootings are sharing a message of unity. When El Paso's Franklin High School and Odessa's Permian High School met on the football field last night, they wanted to do something to show respect and solidarity, and there you go. They held a moment of silence, made special banners to exchange, and then the team spelled out the word love on the field. 22 people, as you know, were killed in that mass shooting in El Paso August 3rd. Seven people killed when a gunman opened fire last Saturday in the West Texas towns of Midland and Odessa. The president of the El Paso team's booster club said, quote, football is simply helping our communities. The 9-11 terror attack on New York and Washington was nearly two decades ago. But on Friday, New York authorities will uh, add 22 names to the memorial to those who died because of cleanup related illnesses. A special ceremony will be held Friday afternoon. All of the people whose names being honored worked for the Fire Department of New York and their names will go on the FDNY World Trade Center Memorial Wall at Ground Zero. More than 200 firefighters who engaged in rescue and recovery efforts have died because of illnesses linked to their work in the wake of the attacks. A federal loan forgiveness program has turned out to be not so forgiving. The Government Accountability Office released a report that indicates 99% of requests for federal student loan forgiveness were denied. Of the more than 53,000 applications, 661 were approved. Congress set aside $700 million in 2018 to expand the program. 
The move was in response to the low number of people qualifying for forgiveness. The program is meant to help borrowers working in the public sector, like teachers and social workers. However, it does require a borrower to have first applied and been rejected to the original program. This new report says about 71% of those who were rejected by the fix had not done so, so that created a confusing process for the borrowers. Dorian making its way up the East Coast, both North and South Carolina have already seen over 10 inches of rainfall in some areas, and the number of people dead in the Bahamas continues to rise. ABC's Megan Tavrizian is in Charleston with the latest. Hurricane Dorian racing through the Carolinas, causing destruction, flooding, and at least 20 reported tornadoes. Which way is it going? Near Myrtle Beach, families had a run from the twisters. Someone drove this Jeep onto the beach, the storm taking it away. The high winds ripping off the siding of these apartment buildings. And all of a sudden, the windows broke loose. Um, everything was swirling in our bedroom. Wind gusts of up to 70 miles per hour tearing down power lines, knocking out electricity to hundreds of thousands. Stores boarding up in Wilmington, North Carolina, as homeowners deal with the flooding. The governor urging residents to hunker down. WTVD's Diane Wilson Coast. is there. The heavy winds and the rain are here. Several tornadoes throughout our area this afternoon, and it's only expected to get worse as Dorian continues to pummel the coast and make the eye here to Wilmington. In the Bahamas, new before and after satellite images showing the utter devastation. Station. Coast Guard helicopters fanning across the northern Bahamas. Most of the homes completely gone. In Abaco, you can't even see the ground. People continuing to share stories of the tragedy and horror Dorian left behind. Water just poured in, and at that point, it was everything was a wash off. As Charleston starts cleaning up the mess left behind by Hurricane Dorian, the storm continues to move north. North Carolina now facing hurricane force winds. Flash flooding remains a major concern. Megan Tabrizian, ABC News, Charleston, South Carolina. Very devastating thinking of everyone affected by that hurricane. But taking a look at those conditions here, that monsoonal moisture that brought some action here in our region yesterday with those scattered showers and thunderstorms has now pushed east. So we are drying out and we are cooling down. But let's take a look at tomorrow. So low pressure is going to move in and dip those temperatures even more. We're tracking the low to mid 90s across the valley tomorrow. 88 expected at the Grapevine, 84 in Tehachapi, 92 in Lake Isabella, and 95 in Mojave. So if you were headed to a village fest, absolutely beautiful conditions for that event. Low 90s by those evening hours, cooling down even more to the low 80s as that event wraps up. And we are tracking those wind speeds picking up as well. So breezy condition throughout the day today, but really picking up tomorrow afternoon significantly in our mountains and deserts and those Wind speeds are going to stay strong in those overnight hours headed into Sunday morning as well. And we are tracking even cooler temperatures on Sunday, potentially seeing the mid 80s return here in the valley. We haven't seen temperatures that cool in months, and it looks like we'll see those 80s headed into your work week as well. So good news there. Kern River Valley, we are tracking the mid 90s today. We'll see those cooler temperatures dipping to the low 80s by Sunday, 85 in to Hatchapi today, low 70s return by Sunday, and we'll see those 70s headed into your work week as well. 83 in Fraser Park today, low 80s tomorrow, low 70s by Sunday. So we are tracking an absolutely beautiful forecast this weekend. Get out there and enjoy it. Check this out. This duck billed dinosaur was just discovered in Japan. It was hiding underneath 72 million year old marine deposits. In other words, these guys were likely beach bums. <laughs> Scientists found the tail first. That was back in 2013. Then they were able to dig up a nearly complete dinosaur skeleton and named it. I don't know why they named it this Kamui Japonicus. Hmm. That was impressive. Yeah, even though scientists say this guy had a duck bill, it's different than any kind of duck bill dino that's been found before. Mm -hmm. The one they found was about 26 feet long and at least 8,000 pounds, the largest dinosaur skeleton ever found in the country. 
Still to come, week three straight ahead, a winning turnout for one high school team and the Packers and Bears on opening night of the new NFL season. Sports is next. 524 now, welcome back. An early season volleyball showdown and a victorious turnaround for one local high school football team. 23 ABC's Carrie Osip has that and more in this morning's Sports Wrap. Welcome into 23 ABC Sports. I'm Carrie Osep. Two top ranked California high school volleyball teams went at it last night. The Liberty Patriots hosting the Clovis North Broncos in a rematch from last week where Liberty came up short. So looking for some redemption, the Pat Wright crew was in full force. Liberty would get hot early. A diving dig from Jalisa Caracchio keeps it alive and Brenna Slayton follows that up with an easy kill. Of course, Liberty bench up and celebrating. Set point in the first for Liberty here. The Broncos going for a kill, but Slayton there to block it and pick up the point. The student section showing off their rowdiness up two sets to one in the fourth match point for the Patriots. Great save by Slayton. She had herself a game and a net violation would end this one. Liberty gets the revenge three sets to one. Coach Amy Parker said a win like this over a top California team sets the right tone for the rest of the season. She was also appreciative of the Pat Riot crew making some noise the whole game. Well, the Foothill Trojans football team had gone 11 games without winning, but last Friday, fate changed for Foothill as they did something they hadn't done since 2017. And of course, it came in thrilling fashion. Matt Lively has this week's Friday Night Live Player of the Week. Well, more like Team of the Week. The Foothill Trojans have taken this practice field over the last year with just one goal in mind, win a football game. Last Friday, they accomplished that goal, and they put it on the back of our Friday Night Live Player of the Week, Brian Diaz. It was on the line, like, it was on my hands to, to get those two points. With under five minutes to play versus Arvin High, Diaz scored this touchdown to make it a one-point game. But the Trojans weren't trying to tie it up. This team was going for the win. There was no doubt. It was real funny. I had the guys on the headset up in the booth were talking like, well, what, what do you think? And I, they're trying to whisper so that I don't hear them. But they're like, what do you think Coach Decker is going to do? And I laughed. I said, guys, there's no way we're kicking it. Like, there's no way. That's not who we are. And it paid off. They ran the exact same play. But this time, Diaz had his guys pushing him in. Never a doubt in his mind he'd be stopped. I did feel them pushing me. It was like, it's just like a little, a little like snudge or something. You weren't going to be denied. No, I wasn't. I'm never going to be denied on the line. For the senior, it's his second win in 21 games over the last two seasons. But he wouldn't have wanted this one any other way. I honestly think I can't even draw another another way to like this, to do it. It's just like it happened. Just it happened. Like it was a great moment. Foothill isn't just settled with this one win. The team thinks this is the turning of a page. At Foothill High School, I'm Matt Lively, 23 ABC Sports, connecting you. We are rooting for you Trojans. Well, last night the Packers and Bears opened up the season for a big rivalry game at Soldier Field. Cue the Bears defense and of course Cleo Mack, but it wasn't him to start. Rodgers pressured here. Roy Robertson Harris pulls him down for the sack. We're going to take another look at this. The one arm pull, he gets him down. That is a big time play. Well, second quarter, first and goal. Rodgers would find Jimmy Graham as tight end in the end zone. An eight yard score. Jimmy Graham muscling in to get that play. Seven to three Packers. Not much scoring in this one as Mason Crosby would tack on three more late in the fourth. Packers win by a slim margin of 10 to 3. We're just hoping that we see Antonio Brown on the field this year and maybe a little more scoring. <laughs> For 23 ABC Sports, I'm Carrie Osef. Have a great morning, everyone. There's still much more to come in our next half hour. Coming up next, a second in command Bakersfield police officer is facing domestic violence charges. We'll have the details. Plus, an annual dog race in Tatchby is on tap for tomorrow. I'll tell you how you can take part. Oh, there's Who's someone I recognize. Yes. <laughs> 528. We're coming right back. This is 23 ABC. Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News starts now. Bakersfield Police Chief Lyle Martin speaking out over the arrest of his assistant chief. We'll have details on what the district attorney plans to do if this case moves forward. Plus one coffee house giant taking mental health and its employees seriously. Details on how they plan to improve benefits. And who's a good dog? Yes, you are. One town's going to the dogs tomorrow. I'll tell you how you can take part in this festival for man's best friend. You knew Danielle would be there. Yeah, there she is. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Good morning and thanks for staying with 23 ABC News at 530. I'm Mike Hart and I'm Alyssa Flores. We're going to turn now to Emma Lockhart. Let us know what the weather is going to be like for all those events this wow, weekend. Wow, what a beautiful Absolutely. day like up on the hill tomorrow. You yeah. can ask for a better oh. forecast and it's going to be even better on Sunday. So let's take a look at those conditions today. We're still going to be hot above average, but slightly cooler compared to where we were at yesterday. Four degrees cooler here in Bakersfield to be exact. 76 degrees if you're headed out the door right now. Across the county, we're seeing those mild conditions, low to mid 70s across the valley floor right now. 68 in Fraser Park, 62 in Pine Mountain Club, 61 in Tehachapi, 66 up in Lake Isabella, and 73 out in Mojave. So tracking those conditions you can expect throughout the day here in Bakersfield as you plan your day. We're going to be in the mid 70s by about 6 a.m., warming up to the low 80s by your mid morning, upper 80s by noon. So getting hot, and uh, we can still expect to see some hazy conditions outside, but we are drying out, so we're not going to be as humid. And then we'll be topping out in the upper 90s today. I'll have more details on those cooler temperatures on the way and your beautiful weekend forecast coming up. We're continuing to follow a fire that broke out in Oildale this morning. That blaze taking place at the Arbor Village Mobile Home Park in Oildale. That's right. Uh, taking a look at uh, some of the video that we got here, crews were notified just before 4 o'clock this morning of flames coming from at least one trailer. Uh, word was that it spread to a second trailer. One completely devastated. Right now it's unknown if anyone was actually inside when the fire started or what caused the blaze. Crews are still on scene there in the mop up phase of this uh, of this fire. So we will continue to monitor what's happening out there, bring you updates as we receive them into our 23 ABC newsroom. The top cop at the Bakersfield Police Department responding as his second in command is accused of a felony crime. Police Chief Lyle Martin spoke to the media Thursday following the arrest of his assistant police chief, Evan Demestahas, who's facing domestic violence charges. Demestahas is on administrative leave after the alleged domestic violence incident that took place around midnight on Wednesday. I look at chief, Assistant Chief Demestahas as a, uh, a mentee. And, you know, are we disappointed? Absolutely, we're disappointed. But it's, you, you, we have to build on what we've started and are we who we say we are. The chief also says the department will conduct a thorough and complete investigation into the matter. The Kern County District Attorney's Office told 23 ABC News that if BPD chooses to submit the domestic house case to the DA's office, it'll submit the case to the Kings County District Attorney's Office for review in order to avoid even the appearance of any conflict of interest in handling the case. Delano Police needs your help to locate a 16-year-old runaway who's been gone for more than a month. Take a look at this picture. This is Rosalio Flores, last seen about 1 in the morning on July 26th. He's 5'4", weighs about 120 pounds, and was last seen wearing black shorts. That's the only information we have. If you know of his whereabouts, or maybe you think you've seen him, you're urged to contact Delano Police at 721-3377, and those who call can remain anonymous. The city of Bakersfield is closing the bike path in southwest Bakersfield to spray for mosquitoes this morning. That's right. So if you're gearing up, you know, you're putting on the bike mm -hmm. pants, you're getting ready to go out. Hang on. 23 yeah. ABC's Daniela Garrido joining us live with how this could affect your morning workout. Daniela. That's right. Good morning. You might want to choose a different path for this morning because as of right here where I'm standing on Allen Road all the way until Enos Lane, that bike path will be closed from 6 a.m. until 9 a.m. today for spraying of mosquitoes. The city of Bakersfield says a lot of people have been concerned. This is actually the third time this year that they've had to spray for mosquitoes. We actually spoke with one of those bikers that typically uses this bike path and they say they've noticed that uptick in mosquitoes. So we have a lot of natural ground out there that they, they flood up with water to perk the underground aquifer. And uh, mosquitoes take that harborage and water and they like to breed in that because they have protection. The city of Bakersfield says over 600 acres of land along the bike path will be sprayed today. So if you see airplanes flying around from 6 a.m. until 9 a.m. this morning, that's because they will be spraying the bike path for mosquitoes. So for now, we're live in southwest Bakersfield. Daniela Garrido, 23 BC News, connecting you.
All right, Daniela, thank you. The Dollar General Literacy Foundation is awarding thousands in grants to California schools, including two right here in Kern County. Sierra Vista Elementary in Arvin is set to receive $3,000, while Bessie Owens Primary in Bakersfield will receive $1,500. The foundation announced the awarding of more than $175,000 in grants in California to help students and educators reach their literacy goals. The grants are expected to impact more than 43,000 students. The Kern County Board of Supervisors preparing to propose a homeless shelter about a block from where the city has been considering opening one already. This all follows a forum Wednesday facilitated by Congressman Kevin McCarthy calling on city, county, state and federal leaders to put a plan together in the next two weeks. According to the agenda, Supervisor Mike Maggard has requested a response from the board on the development of low barrier transitional housing and day use facilities north of Golden State Avenue between M Street and O Street. That's about a block away from Wheel Park, the location the city has floated as a potential site for the shelter. The board will discuss the proposal Tuesday morning during their meeting. A special opportunity to support our veterans and their families on Saturday when the Veterans of Foreign Wars host their annual POW MIA Recognition Day. The event's being held at the Bakersfield Music Hall of Fame on R Street beginning at 3 o'clock. An official with the Department of Defense and two prisoners of war will be on hand, along with families whose loved ones are still missing in action. This event is free to the public, but seating is limited. The doors open at 2. Now, after that, the public's invited to a barbecue starting at 5 at the American Legion Hall on H Street. Tickets for the dinner will cost you $15. For more information, call that number right there on your screen. Kern County is going to the dogs this weekend as the annual event returns to Tehachapi. The annual Gone to the Dogs event is a 5K walk and run and pet festival. The walk and run are not timed and they're designed for dogs to take their humans down the path. Ah. Runners without dog escorts will be welcomed as well. The pet fest will include a petting zoo, animal adoptions, doxy races and a memorial butterfly release. It's happening tomorrow from 9 a.m. until noon at Meadowbrook Park into Hatchapi. And you can also get your own furry friend this weekend while meeting county firefighters. It's the Mutz and Fire Trucks Pet Adoption Event. Adoption fees are waived for active and retired military. You can bring your kids to check out the fire trucks and meet your very own firefighters. The event is happening this Saturday from 1 until 4 p.m. at the station off Downing Avenue. And great weather this weekend for all of those events. Absolutely. But let's take a look at yesterday. We reached the triple digits. One 101 was we reached here in Bakersfield yesterday, so well above average for this time of year. We should be at around 93 degrees uh, today. Those temperatures are going to be slightly cooler, although still above average for this time of year. We're already at 76 degrees right now. Still uh, tracking unhealthy air quality for sensitive groups with a forecasted AQI of 115, so you can still expect to see hazy conditions outside, although we're not going to be humid like yesterday. That monsoonal moisture has pushed to the east, so we will be drying out and those temperatures dipping slightly. So upper 90s expected across the valley floor today. 97 to be exact here in Bakersfield. 93 at the Grapevine. Over in our mountain communities, we are tracking the low to mid 80s in our southern mountains. 94 up in Lake Isabella. Out in our desert cities, we're tracking the upper 90s and triple digits, but those temperatures are dipping even more tomorrow and we will potentially see those 80s return on Sunday. I'll have more details on those cool temperatures impacting us this weekend and uh, if we'll see them head into our work week as well. All right, still to come, Nicki Minaj yeah. says she's taking a timeout. Putting herself in timeout? Well, I guess she is, yeah. No, yeah, it's for good reason. Yeah, we'll tell you what the hip hop yeah. sensation says she's going to do with all this extra time now. And he brought you The Shining, Pet Cemetery, and Cujo. Now uh -huh. Stephen King's latest addition to the mix, It. I am dreading even looking at this video. <laughs> okay, I'm going to look away. That's coming up. <laughs> Welcome back to 23 ABC. No major traffic incidents to report at this time, but we'll be monitoring that throughout the morning, so stay with us. Facebook is... Uh Dating. <laughs> well, Facebook's not dating, but Facebook dating. They're, they're trying to help you. 
Help we didn't, me? No, not you. Okay, we didn't know that we needed this, but it's now coming to the United States. <laughs> Stop helping. Yeah, Stop so helping pe social media. People on Facebook and Instagram will be able to add their friends to what's called uh -huh. a secret crush list. Uh -huh. So if two friends add each other as a crush, then Facebook dating makes a connection. So it's kind of like Tinder, but it's kind of not. In its safety guidelines, Facebook warns that it does not conduct background checks. So beware of that. Okay. General Motors says it's going with Google. GM says it will use Google technology to drive its navigation and voice activated cars beginning in 2021. General Motors says while Google will be embedded in the dashboard, the company will not have access to any information on how a person drives or their vehicle maintenance. And Macy's is rethinking its discounts. The real retailer, which has been relying on those discounts to clear out their inventory, says it will now save up to $550 million a year by simply being more targeted with their promotions and pricing the items better. There you go. A new study shows vegetarians are at lower risk of heart disease than meat eaters, but at higher risk of stroke. Researchers found vegetarians and vegans increase their risk of stroke 20% by not eating meat. It is thought that may be due to either very low cholesterol levels or certain nutritional deficiencies. Vegetarians who also eat fish, which are known as pescatarians, did not show any increased risk of stroke. Some physicians